Well, it's a hot afternoon here in the Franklin Mountains, and I'm just driving over the pass, uh, going over the Trans Mountain Road on my way home from work, and I decided to uh, stop on the Ron Coleman Trail here just to go for a short hike, just to get away from computer screens and TVs and all the technology that that uh, takes in so much so much of our lives and. It's not so hot. It's, there's a nice cool breeze up here. I just passed some high school students, uh, talked to them about the Sierra Club, encouraged them to get more involved. It's really nice and uh, there's a nice breeze. It's probably about 90 degrees, but the breeze keeps it cooler. And uh, I'm just out here uh, enjoying the trail. I'm going to go for a little bit longer and uh, I'll point out some of the things that I'm seeing as I go along. This plant right in front of me is a Spanish dagger or Tori yucca. It's uh, pretty common uh, in the Chihuahuan Desert and in the Franklin Mountains. And uh, uh, right now it's uh, bearing fruit. Uh, it's kind of an interesting story. Only the yucca moth will pollinate the flowers. And uh, it's a beautiful flower too. Uh, it's in the agave family. It used to be classified in the lily family. And uh, it flowers almost every year as long as you get enough rain. Those fruits are important to different species of wildlife. Deer will knock over the plant or the fruits will fall to the ground and, and deer will eat them. And as you can see on the mountainside here, there's quite a few of them mixed in with some shrubs and cactus. All these yellow flowers out here in the front are, are skeleton leaf goldeneye. Uh, they're members of the sunflower family. Uh, one of my favorite plants up here uh, looks similar to the the giant dagger or the Spanish dagger, also called Toriyaca, but it's different. It's called Solto, and, and there's one right next to me. It's not completely in bloom. It is a, uh, a young flower stalk, and Solto are, are pretty common up here, and let me show you what they look like uh, when they're in full bloom. So uh, here's one in full bloom. Uh, the flower stalk is probably reaching close to uh, 15, 20 feet and uh, the flowers are putting out their pollen I'm sure and uh, there's a male and a female plant out here there's some more in the background and uh, hopefully some insects are going to pollinate them and we'll have some seeds here fall into the ground pretty soon. Uh, this is a uh, very important plant in Big Bend National Park I know because the bear will tear it apart during the winter time and go right at the base of the plant and eat the cabbage part. And I've seen bears do this. And uh, during the winter time when there's not a whole lot of things for them to eat, uh, Soltol may be keeping some of the bears alive in Big Bend. The early pioneers used to use the stalks of the Soltol for building uh, their roofs like a they built a thatch roof with Soltol stalks. Uh, there's an alcoholic beverage uh, that's made from the Soltol. Uh, not the stalk, but down here at the base, they'll tear it apart. Indians used to tear it apart and roast it. And what they do in Mexico is they'll roast those, uh, those Soltol hearts and then make an alcoholic beverage out of it called Soltol. So I'm taking this video with my iPhone 6, uh, kind of in a shady spot, and now I have a cloud providing a little bit more shade. And I'll be heading over the mountain to the west side where I live, and uh, hopefully I won't get too depressed by what I see because there's so much development going on on the western side of the mountains. Uh, these lowland areas that are being developed are very important to many species of wildlife. And uh, I've been involved uh, for many years working with some of the environmental and other outdoor groups trying to protect this land. If you want to learn more about what you can do to help uh, save our Franklin Mountains and especially the lower elevations that are being chewed up by shopping centers and new buildings and new housing areas, uh, I highly recommend you go to the website maintained by the Franklin Mountains uh, Wilderness Coalition at uh, franklinmountains.org.
plant that's up here that uh, is also in the agave family. It's called lechuguilla, an indicator plant of the Chihuahuan Desert, which means that if you see lechuguilla, you know you're in the Chihuahuan Desert someplace. There's actually four deserts in North America. And uh, here we can see one that's dead, which means it is flowered. And then right next to it is a one that has never flowered. And then now here's one that has flowered. So we've been looking at uh, Sotol. And then right next to the Sotol we've been seeing some, uh, some yuccas, like your uh, Tori yucca, Spanish dagger. Uh, this Sotol in front of me almost looks like a yucca, but it's not. It, it is actually a Sotol. Uh, Sotol have leaves that have little sharp edges, as you can see in looking closely at these leaves. In contrast to the, the yuccas where the leaves are smooth. These ones have toothed leaves. This is a pretty big Sotol. And right in the middle, if you look carefully, you can see a bird nest. That's probably a cactus wren who has built its nest among the leaves of the Soto as a way to protect the nest from predators. So here's another one. But there's something very similar to the Soto growing in here where the leaves are very thin. And this is a type of bear grass or oftentimes called Nolina. And it, it, there's different species of it. But here it is, and you can see there's about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten flowers growing up from the bottom of the plant. Very pretty, whitish flowers with uh, green seeds forming. Uh, unlike the Soto that grows one main flower stalk, the Nolina will have multiple stalks almost all the time. Uh, so this is also called basket grass because Native Americans used to make baskets out of it and you can still find remnants of this in some of the caves around here where Indians used to live. And then there's also some prickly pear cactus that have already pretty much finished blooming for the season. Okay, well, I still haven't made it home yet. Um, I stopped here at the Tom Mays unit of Franklin Mountain State Park, mainly because I wanted to get a picture of some of the blooming lechuguilla uh, that are in the lower elevations uh, right now. Here Again, this is mid-June of 2015. Uh, this is a great little park. Uh, they closed the gates in late afternoon, so... Um, You'd almost have to be camping inside to be hiking on those trails right now, but it's a great place to go on a morning hike any time of the year. And they also have picnic areas and campsites. And every year, the park uh, sponsors the Chihuahuan Desert Fiesta with the Chihuahuan Desert Education Coalition and other local groups helping to uh, sponsor uh, educational programs on that day. So I'm walking out here into the desert and uh, I'm seeing a few lechuguilla in bloom in the distance. So let me walk you over to where we can get some pictures of those red flowers. Okay, here's a small one that has pretty much almost finished blooming. Uh, it didn't grow very tall for some reason. Uh, maybe this plant just wasn't getting enough nourishment from the soil. Or perhaps uh, an animal bit the young stalk when it was first coming up. But uh, this one here is probably only about, oh gosh, about four feet tall. You can see the blossoms are really pretty. And it's blowing here in the wind. So let me take you over to some other plants that are a little bit more typical of a blooming lechuguilla here in the Chihuahuan Desert. As you can see at this elevation, there's a lot of lechuguilla. And when you have lechuguilla growing in this abundance, you really gotta be careful uh, when you're walking around because you don't wanna get poked by one of those sharp pointed leaves. There's some kind of 
toxic substance that if you get poked it can really cause a painful sore on your leg and uh, as a result of it uh, I've given the lake she gave my own little nickname because if you hike in the Chihuahuan Desert long enough here's some dead ones that have already bloomed here's a live one that hasn't eventually it's going to get you so I've, I've nicknamed uh, Leche Gia, Leche Getcha. So watch out for Leche Getcha, okay? So now I've found a beautiful uh, Leche Gia that is about, uh, oh, about eight feet tall, and it's in full bloom, and there's two others with it. So let's take a look at it. It's beautiful. I love this plant. Uh, the lechuguilla is an important food plant for mule deer, javelina, and many other uh, plants, I mean other, other animals that live here in the desert. Uh, I'm sure that at some point or other some of the rodents out here will eat it, maybe the seed pods. Uh, squirrels will climb up on it and eat those fruits and seed pods. So this is the lechuguilla in full bloom. And then, uh, and then after it finishes its bloom, uh, the entire plant will die. Just like the century plant, which we really don't have growing in this area of the desert. Lechuguilla, learn it, know it. It's an important plant here in the Chihuahuan Desert and it lives here in abundance.